looks like we are ready to go. And a wonderful time in prayer. Once again, it's great to see everybody here tonight. Missing those that couldn't be here. Getting sick or all kinds of different things coming up. Thank you for everybody making all the efforts to being here and helping with everything. It's awesome to see. Supporting the local church is one of the very important things for the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. There's just so many, so many things that um, the enemy is trying to make us see everything that is so important and thinking that the basics is, is not exciting and things like that. That's, that's not true. The kingdom of God is 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 so everlasting, and we, it's it is simple. It wasn't supposed it wasn't supposed to be the most important things. Aren't always the the deep things. You know, there is deep and hidden things of the Lord, and we'll never be able to find all that there is of God because there's just so much of who He is that you'll never be able to see it. No matter how many eternities you spend in heaven, there's just so much. Even the angels keep screaming holy as they keep on realizing new things of Him. How much more on earth can we uh, gather of Him? But it's the simple things that makes the power come. There's nothing, nothing strange about it. It's all so simple a two-year-old can understand. And it's not to look at, not to be seen as the body of Christ as a boring thing, or this is old-fashioned, or something like this. No, prayer meeting, communion, worship, and the Word, gathering just to take care of business and everything. This is, this is God's people, separate from the ways of the world. We are made to be blessed in a way that can't be seen. The things that strengthen us is the things that we don't see physically. And we don't want to get caught up with the things of this world because they cloud the vision of the infinite in our life. And we don't want anything to, to get in the way. We don't want it to have it re-looked at another way. We don't want to find any fences to straddle and to meet the enemy halfway or try to reach out so far that we forgot who we, who we are. No, it's, it's simple. Just sing His praises, get into His Word, and let the Word of God just touch you and change you, whether we intellectually understand it or not. A lot of times we won't, but yet we're still receiving the blessings of the Lord overall. And I uh, wanted to take a look at a couple of things before we did. Of course, there's a big thing going on right now. I'm not going to get so into it. I know, you know sometimes the holidays come up and people will preach about the Nativity and things like that. I don't generally do stuff like this, but I... I think it's such a big deal that I kind of wanted to bring it up and then I'm going to look at the text that I wanted to show you and said Jeremiah 14. Today I'll just read it. We can look at it together on the screen and you can go over it another time and kind of add to however you like to mark up your Bible if you do like to do that. But I'll just read it together. Um, I actually have it on the screen as well, but I have a couple other things before that I'd like to show us as well. And let this whole service be in the atmosphere of prayer as our, our soul just, just wants to be at God's house. And I just cannot handle the thought of um, anyone outside of the church saying that we're not going to be gathering in the churches. I don't think there should be anything that should stop the body of Christ except for really serious matters um, to stop them from gathering. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. And I believe that should be, if, if you can get there, then we should be there. I, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It, God's house is a mighty priority and it ought to always be. And I believe the Lord blesses those who make priority of the Lord's day and His time in His house among His people and His spirit. Amen. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. the first thing we wanted to see here. Of course, we're here at the West Side Holiness. And I said, what, we will remain open until the pastor dies or Jesus cometh with clouds. Hallelujah. This thing that's going on right now is not real. It's not what they say it is. And it's not going to hurt you. So please don't worry about this thing. We need to keep our eyes on the Lord. This is not the new God. This is not something that's supposed to take the ideas of the church. It's not, it's not for us to worry about at all. It shall, not, it shall not come nigh thee. Amen. It shall not come nigh thee. You're not going to get hurt by this, this lie. It's not really happening. It's something else that's going on. And we'll get into some of that a little bit later. But let's start with uh, a thought here. And then we're going to go into prayer and ask the Lord to bless it. Um, we can see something that everybody knows in, in the book of, in the New Testament. It, it has four different books that all have the exact same piece of history, the time of Jesus that he was actually on earth. God manifest in the flesh and walking on earth. It's the same piece of history written by four different people and same as in the, in the Old Testament. Oh, I mixed them up, didn't I? In the, in the New Testament it's these and this is the Old Testament. But in the book of the Kings there's two different books that spell out that entire time. There's two different books that uh, write out the exact same time called the book of the Chronicles, but first and second Chronicles. And there's also five poetry books that are written in the same time, same exact piece of history. And then there's also prophecy books 
where God is speaking. And there's 17 books here. It's really, really clear that God likes to speak here. The same piece of history, only two, two, two books for the perspective of the kings. And only two books from the perspective of the priests. Five books from the perspective of the poets. And 17 books from God. Clearly he wants to speak overall in the Old Testament. That God is doing them a lot of the talking, and a lot of it is a very, very heavy, heavy-hitting uh, topics that he's bringing to those that should know better. Uh, we're thinking about the people of old. They, they got to see miracles beyond anything we've got to see. And yet God says, you've drifted away. You've got carried away with the cares of this world and the pleasures of this world, and thus bringing in all kinds of different factors as well. Every nation has different factors of strengths, and every nation has different factors of things that they don't want to happen, and God lets those things that they don't want to happen to let them know, I'm talking to you, and you've got to listen. You, I am talking, and you better be listening, says the Lord. Even his number one people oftentimes wouldn't listen when he was speaking. Most of the words that was coming was from God, and even with all that warning and with all those miracles, yet his people, his number one people, was often way off course. So let that be a, a radical alarm going off for us to remember to heed the call and to grab hold of the basics of the things of God and to know that he's still talking to us directly through his Holy Spirit and through his written word. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mighty scripture, Lord. We thank you for the great prophet Jeremiah. We thank you for all that he has shown us this far to get to know you better, Lord. Uh, I think as we are so m radically influenced by the surrounding minds of this world, God, it, it always makes us try to see you under a different light. We know we're never going to be able to see all that there is of you, but there is enough of you to be known of through nature and your scripture and testimonies, dear Heavenly Father, that we do know a lot of who you are, and we don't want to see you for less than you are, Lord. We want to come together and magnify your name and to make you look greater and greater, Lord, no matter how great we make you look, Lord, but while we describe your splendor and your wonder, Lord, it will never compete with who you really are because we just don't even know. Words cannot tell how great you really are, Lord. There's, there is nothing to describe you because you're indescribably glorious, Lord, and powerful powerful beyond all measure and all description, dear Heavenly Father, but we want to magnify you in your house today, Lord, that, that men might praise you, Lord, that all oh, that men would praise you for who you really are and tremble in your presence, Lord, and to tremble at your word, Lord. You promised to have your eye upon those, dear Heavenly Father, that will, that will tremble at your word, Lord. I pray that your church would not just read it, Lord, but they would realize that the Almighty is speaking and that hearts need to be pulsating, Lord, and, and to be resonating with the reality, Lord, that we will be really believers and doers of the word and not hearers only and deceiving ourselves. Lord, I believe there's a lot of deception that has come into churches of all sorts in many different ways. I think there's a demonic tailored suit to fit the body of every body of believer. Lord, they're spread out and they're getting attacked in many different ways and turning their eyes away from you, almighty God who is on the throne, dear Heavenly Father. Bring souls back. Bring back the prodigals. Bring back those who don't even know they're drifted away. Those who've drifted into strong delusions and drifted into strange spirits. Lord, in your name and yet it is not of you. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd stir your hearts of your people to radical righteousness and that we may obtain that crown, may obtain the prize and have great treasures in heaven for proving that we care about you more than we care about the opinions of dead sinners. Dear Heavenly Father, let the living God be glorified in his house today. Let the living God be known in this place today. Let us know the awe and the fear and the dreadful majesty of the true and living God who is on the throne and let your glorious Son at your right hand be honored as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So, I'm not going to get carried away with the things of the world. I believe this utterance is of the Lord. I think this scripture is really, really clear and really, really sound. So, I, I, I believe that the Lord, just the plain text, I didn't have to find something fancy because the Lord didn't open up a whole lot of things. So, it's just going to be the text, and I'm going to show you what I believe it's saying. And I think it's, it's really clear, and I believe the blessing will be very, very sure. Jeremiah 14, I'm going to read uh, probably the first chunk of it. There's, I think, it's 16 verses. And then we'll, we'll discuss as we go through. And I'll kind of show you, like, different pages seem to have different um, parts to it. This is where the introduction is. In the next part, we'll see um, where the Lord begins to speak here. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth. So God, God is already speaking through Jeremiah concerning the dearth. Dearth is talking about, like, a drought, some type of a physical drought. And like we're saying, there's a lot of different things that nations have that makes them comfortable. 
Um, nations that are comfortable back in the Middle East, it's when their armies were strong, their horses were strong, their chariots were all polished up, their walls around their city was really, really mighty, they were high and all the guards were at their places and everything. There's a lot of different things that they would count as we are strong. And sometimes when God nails in mouth, then he wait, wait for people to mess with them. He just attacks their reign. There's no reign and so now there's a dearth. And that shows you a picture of what happens. This is one of those things I call warning signs before God brings his final judgment and makes a lot of people wish that they were never born and wish that they had paid a lot better, closer attention. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. The gates languish. Okay, this is one of the many different pictures of a city that's healthy. A lot of times you'll see a city or an individual described almost identically. The gates to the city is something that is a huge part of the strength of a nation. It's the strength of a nation. It's the strength of the, of the gates, like I say, in the chariots, horses, shields, and the army and everything. Um, all these things represent the strength of them, even the tall cedars of giant trees. All these different things are different prophetic ways of saying this is the strength of them. But it says the gates, they're, they're of languish. They're not strong. They are black unto the ground. Something about them not being what they're supposed to be, and they're almost, whether they're physically down or they're not, there's something about them that's really not strong anymore. So he's just letting them know the city is not what it once was. And the cry of Jerusalem has gone up. The gates are gone down, and the cries for mercy are going up, God. And it says they're nobles. Nobles, they're kind of their higher-ups, sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water like the kind of the prime ministers or something, sending their children or something like this, the lower higher-ups going out there to find water. They returned with their vessels empty. They, they were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads. You can start to see a picture of what happens after a nation starts to go under the warning signs. Right. Amen. And all of a sudden they start to say, I'm ashamed, like, wow, I didn't realize how disrespectful I was to the source of life, even though I thought it was this, that, and the other. Well, it's actually God, and they didn't consider him, even though they were the ones who have his heritage like nobody else is in the history of the world. So their judgment was pretty strong here, and it ought to be. They were ashamed, and they covered their heads in embarrassment because they realized, wow, we're not doing so hot. We're, we're receiving at least one of them glorious warning signs from God because the ground is chapped, for there was no rain in the earth. The plowmen, even the farmers, they covered their heads because they're shamed. Amen. They're shamed. Now here we go. Next couple places. Yea, this is a little bit deeper picture where the animals are starting to get into the picture. Yea, the hind, like a like a deer or something like this, uh, also calved in the field and forsook it. They don't even want to go to the field anymore because there was no grass. And the wild asses did stand in the high places. They snuffed up the wind like the dragons. Their eyes did fail because there was no grass. There's not even animals. Or not, even the animals are suffering. You see that happening when nations get hit. Everybody, like, what about all these animals? Doesn't God care about these animals? Well, they get hurt too because everything's connected and the judgment falls upon all. Even like when God's judgment comes upon him and he comes and several times in the Bible you see the Lord come down with a sword or come down with judgment and knock out the nation. And sometimes those nations are riding on horses and sometimes the horses get it too. The Supper of the Great God in the book of Revelation, it's pretty heavy duty. Revelation 19, O oh Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, this is where they're praying back, O oh Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against thee. So they're confessing it. It's almost like they're trying to say, like, you know, get us back on track just for your name's sake. That's what he did for David. And he's like, you guys are so messed up, but because of a promise I made to David, I'm going to let Judah survive. That's why Judah isn't scattered like the other 11 tribes of Israel. O oh, the hope of Israel, the Savior thereof, in time of trouble, why shouldest thou be as a stranger in the land, and as a wayfaring man that turneth aside to tarry for a night? God, why aren't you paying attention? They know, just, just, just do it anyway, Lord, for your name's sake. Just keep being with us, keep blessing us for, for your name's sake. I think it's kind of part of the package. And the number nine says, Why shouldest thou be as a man astonied, as a mighty man that cannot save? Yet thou, O Lord, art in the midst of us, and we are called by thy name. Leave us not. People seem to understand when the Lord is there, and when he's really not there, they, boy, they really get it. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. Now he's answering back unto this people. Thus have they loved to wander. They always have the wandering lust or the itchy feet running in strange directions. They have not refrained their feet. 
we're supposed to refrain ourselves, we're supposed to bridle ourselves, our tongues, our feet, our actions, our hearts, our minds. Therefore the Lord doth not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. We all know how God thinks about sin, and it's not a really good thought at all to think that the Lord is going to visit the sins and that person is actually us. That's what they're thinking, like, whoa, he's going to be visiting our sins? That's not. A, it's never been a good thing, ever. Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. Now, pray not for these people. That's one of the worst things you could ever hear. We heard that happen when little boy Samuel's prophesying. Everybody who hears his prophecy, his first prophecy, everybody's ears are going to tingle when they hear this because they're going to realize that even the house of Eli has no hope at all. Now, you saw just a couple chapters before where God is saying, I'm going to get you for your sins, but if you will come back, I will meet with you, but if you continue to go back, I will leave you again. So if he continues to leave them, eventually they're going to die in their sins. So this is a pretty strong warning. Pray not for these people because there's something that they're going to have to go through because I'm tired of dealing with their sins. Verse 12 says, when they fast, I will not hear their cry. This is falling into the hands of, uh, pray not for this people is this doctrine of past the point of no return. Pray for them and they're not going to do anything. You're praying in vain. Now this is the praying in vain verse over here. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and an oblation, I will not accept them. Twice he says, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Now these are three different warning signs. There's actually more where the Lord will allow people to lose their blessings of their chariots and their walls and their gates and everything else that makes them strong, the horn of Israel or, or the pomp of Israel, the pride of Israel or the great pride of Jerusalem. It says that in the chapter right before, the great pride of Jerusalem is all being brought down. The strength of the nation is being brought down. By what? By sword, because of a war, he's going to allow the wars. So well, God is the God of war. He's going to look at us. Why isn't God stopping these wars? No, God is the one saying, I'm going to allow these wicked people to mess with you because you don't care to stop, to, to stop turning away from me. I will consume them by the sword. Sometimes that's the sword of his own mouth, of his own judgment. Sometimes it's a might of war. It sounds like war right here. And by the famine, which they're going through, and by pestilence coming in there, locusts or something, and the canker worm or whatever, eating their crops and ruining their blessings and making them realize that God is talking. Sometimes that happens to God's people, and they said, and yet they still, they knew it was God, but they didn't, they didn't heed the call anyway. So now God's talking back again, says, Then said I, or no, the prophet. Ah, Lord God, behold the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine. But I will give, but I will give you assured peace in this place. Now this is what the false prophets do today. Mm. I talk crazy. I tell them what the real Bible says. I tell them what the Lord really says. I show you how these patterns that we're going through, and you guys are on the wrong side of the pattern. Please don't keep thinking like that. Please don't keep going to these kind of churches. Don't go to these, these clowns that are preaching lies to you, giving you peace, when there is no peace. The Bible says, I will give you assured peace in this place. That's what, uh, that's what happened to King Ahab, and he went out there, and the spear went right through him, even though he tried to trick everybody who he was for real. The devil is a liar. 14 says, Then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them. Neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination. And a thing of naught. And the deceit of their heart. They're, they're prophesying from their own heart. But the Bible says the heart is deceitful among all things. And who can know it? So they're preaching lies. And these lies are so bad he calls them divination. It's like basically they're preaching witchcraft in the name of the holy that's very, very scary. So here's the last verse I want to show you here in verse 15. Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I send them not, yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. That's what they said. They lied. But God said, no, by sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. Mm -hmm. You can say whatever you want, but the Lord is saying otherwise. So let's go ahead and leave it on that note where the Lord is letting people know about his prophets here. So right now we, we see something that's an epidemic happening even in our own nation that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty significant. I, I consider it to be pretty significant because it's actually affecting the stores in a, a kind of an interesting kind of a way. And uh, we see genuine warning shots where there actually is an actual war, where it's really significant. I, I think what's happening right now is only dangerous 
because people in America and even in the churches are so easily deceived that the news can tell them whatever and they'll just believe it and they'll they'll live by it. I mean, they actually go to the store. They're actually trying to get this and trying to get this, proving that they believe the liars. The news has always been liars and people know that, but yet they go with it anyway because that's what everybody else is doing. Peer pressure seems to dominate rather than the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we ought to have our eyes upon God and say like, I was thinking about this too, like China's getting hurt really bad with whatever's really going on. I mean to be telling the truth. If I don't hit it right, it's because I didn't really know, but I really mean it. I think I really do know. And But they're, they're going under these judgments and things are really happening to them bad. And it's really scary to see a, a people going through all this and they don't even say, God, we are wrong. We're sorry. You're doing this to us because we are guilty against uh, c committing crimes against you. They don't even realize that they're the busted ones and they don't even say, let's turn back to God. No, they just turn to the internet and find out, what does this guy got to say about it? What does this guy who doesn't know anything got to say about it? Let's listen to the people who are trying to kill us to find out what they've got to say about it. No, we need to go back to God and find out what he's got to say about it. There, there's an understanding that we have to see is that the world is so easily deceived. So easily deceived. If these false prophets are leading people away from God by prophesying lies in my name, says the Lord, is it not possible that that can happen even now to people who haven't got the heritage that Israel even had? We have less power and heritage in today's Christianity, yet we still think that we could never fall. And people go around praying around saying, blessing, 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 when that's not how it always is. If you knew the atmosphere in the church that must remain, that can only be there from people who are on their knees crying out for God and saying, God, we need you always. Whether you're blessing us, God, we need you always. Whether we're feeling like we're under attack, God, we need you always. You're going to be our portion no matter what's going on. Whether our life looks good or bad on the outside is irrelevant. God, you are our portion, period. Mm -hmm. And we don't ever want to lose sight of how important it is to honor him, whether we're doing bad or good. What, why, is that, why would that ever factor it in? If he's God, he's deserving it no matter what, you're, whether he's blessing you or not. You don't want to be like the lepers and all run away and say we don't care what he gives. No, it's very, very easy to, to, to deceive people. I remember back um, several months ago, maybe like last year or something, when um, there was a, the bridge was under works, and so during the week... It was closed off, and I'm like, man, this is really scary. It made me late for my job because I had to go way over around Lafayette, way out of the way, and just to get back to where I could have gotten in two minutes. And I'm like, man, I had this realization. I'm like, we're way more under control than we think we are because they own the gas that I need to drive. I feel all free, but I'm using their gas that I need to continue to fill up all the time, and I need their roads. I can't drive on the farmlands. They're a little bumpy, and I don't think I could get very far in that at all. And so if they want to put a little roadblock there, we have to abide because everything that we do is under their system. Mm -hmm. And everything that these people are doing, they don't love us. But it's really scary to see how easily it is to trap us. It's easy to trick us, and they don't care about us. Even a worldly man called Michael Jackson, uh, he said the same thing. He's got a long list. I'm not going to give you the lyrics. You can look it up yourself. But he's getting all this stuff about how these bad things are happening, whatever, and, and like they don't care about us. And then not that long later, he, he was removed. I, I saw a video um, of people who were surgeons. They were playing around with pieces of things that they had cut out of human beings, and they were playing around with them, dancing around with them, like with rap music in the background. Like they have no respect for what they're doing. It's just a joke to them. I'm like, when you're in the medical world, you've got to be real, real serious. In ministry, you better be really, really serious, because that's even more when you're dealing with spiritual surgery, but clowning around behind the scenes like this ain't no thing, or seeing people playing with the babies, because they, they are living in that kind of a world where they think it's okay to hurt babies that are in the womb. They take them out and they play with them like they're rag dolls or something like this is, is a joke. They don't care about us. They're, they're not good people. Folk in the medical field helping people die at accelerating rates, there was a godly woman in, in the chick ministry who was showing a, a great testimony of a really true story. And she says, I was there. I know the progression of a person going down into when they're, I know they're going to die, but they sure did die a lot quicker. And finally God revealed to her how that was happening. One of the sweetest people in the place, well, God showed this person doesn't care about people. And they're allowing people, they're doing things to them in the night that, that you don't want to know about. Not only are they doing things with their medicine and stuff, but they're also doing things with their prayers to a God that is not the God of the Bible. And hurting people. They don't care about us. we got to understand that. There was a sister that had gone here before, 
and her physical sister um, used to have a job in the government and um, later on she lost the position for a certain reason whatever I don't know and started doing temp jobs trying to get the money going on and she took a temp job that was really really interesting and it was playing a, a mock trial or mock um, emergency situation where they get a bunch of temporary people and they put a little tag on their chest that says broken arm or broken leg or can't breathe or something like that. I lost my vision from this whatever. I don't know. Different types of pr problems that happen. People lying all over the place. And the emergency team was going out trying to grab a bunch of people and they would ask, what's wrong with you? And they'd say, oh, my leg is broken. And they, they would leave them behind. They would say, oh, this one's strong enough to get up. Okay, we'll help you, but we're not going to help you. There's a lot of things that I've learned over the years that makes me realize that they really don't have our best interest in overall. It's really, really interesting to think and how easy it is to trick people. If, like I said, if, if Israel can be tricked after they've seen uh, the, the fire by night and the, and the cloud by day and all the miracles and the Red Sea opening up and yet they could still turn away from God and be so careless, even with the clear prophetic warning from men that they saw do miracles, they knew it was for real, happened to the church. We don't even have that luxury today because who's the one doing these miracles that we see in Scripture? Jesus said, greater works will you do. Where are they? And, and if we see them, will we pay attention? Wow. Israel fell even with all the miracles. There, there's a really interesting uh, tactic that I understand. It's a, it's a worldly trick that they, I think that they use because, you know, pigs, they don't really have a spirit nature that they're trying to honor God. They'll just go with whatever their flesh wants. And that's why it's so easy to trick the masses. And um, they would, what they do is they try to give, uh, they put a bunch of corn in the, in the middle of the forest where all the swine will go out there and they'll eat it. They'll start eating it. Like, well, this is great. I don't have to hunt my food. And then they'll put up a wall and they'll keep continue walking around the wall, put another wall, another wall. They'll continue walking around. They'll see the cage going up, but they don't care. They're so ingrained and moving by their flesh that they don't even care. The thing's a big old cage with a big old door open and they all cr cr cram in there to get their food, free food. Yeah, yeah, it's, I'm getting you know, convenience, and then, and then the door slams and now they're trapped. You know, this is the same thing with, with this America. They've got so much technology, everything is so easy, and I'm saying the faster the Wi-Fi, the more problems we're going to have. These things have been proven to do damage to us. And so I'm saying we are losing something that we need, something very basic and very natural. We're losing because of all these conveniences. It's a trap. Public schools, they got these things going on. They're there to brainwash your children and to steal them away from the family and to steal them away from the Lord. That's what they're made for. They're there to brainwash you and set you up and prime you for the system. It's easier to go there than to raise them on your own. So to honor those who do homeschooling, I'm saluting you with every last drop of blood in my body. You're doing a good job. 501c3 for the churches. It's easier to go that way and go with the system. Convenience is going to make people get deceived very, very easily driver's licenses and all these things. We've already talked about these things. There's a lot of different marriage licenses. These are these different ways that the system tries to trap you and make everything that's sovereign and glorious in God's sight and make it all into a bunch of uh, corporations so it's really a lot easier to move forward. Higher the Wi-Fi, the less the brain waves. Remember a long time ago when I was a lot younger, there was that show with the, Will Smith comes out. It's called Independence Day where the aliens come down. Mm -hmm. And the thing that came to my mind, I, I was sitting there watching a movie. I don't watch movies hardly at all anymore, but I, I remember thinking that. I was like, mm -hmm. I looked at my dad, and he says, this is the way they're going to try to get the world together. And I said, yep, that's exactly what I thought. At the exact same time, I said, they're trying to get the world to put their differences aside and find a bigger problem so they unify, and that's exactly what they do. Coronavirus. Now everybody, oh, let's all be, you know, let's, well, let's just survive now. Let's just be together. So there's different ways that they do. They bring up a lie and they get people to play their little games. It's very, very easy to trick them, to trick the, the uh, mainstream people. Make up a lie and call it whatever and get the people to do it. Like I was thinking about like the Roman Catholic Church. They used to sell indulgences. It doesn't exist, but they, they sell it there and they lie to people. People believe the lie and now they can control the people with this, with this terrible lie. Really, really, really scary. And it's also really scary to think about some of these big people in the media who have a lot of control in here. Decades ago, when he was a lot younger, his name was Rupert Murdoch, and he was in front of a large group of people telling them clearly, listen to me, you are the reality. What I'm doing is all show business. Everything you see on the TV is a circus. It's not real. You don't understand reality because only 3% of you actually read books. If you read books, you would know that, that, was, that this is all a lie. Don't believe the lie. He was part of it. He's the one who put it there. And he's, and he's basically saying, it works so easily, 
that I actually feel sorry for you. He's telling them that plainly, and yet they still sit, they, they think it's like a show or something like that. It's easy to trick the masses. Keith Green wrote a song years ago where he's putting himself lyrically in this, the, the devil's seat, and he says, no one believes in me anymore. It's so easy to deceive people because they don't even believe I'm there. You're reading my tarot cards. You're reading all my false guides. You're reading all this crazy spiritism, reading whatever you want, and getting into sin and thinking it ain't no thing at all. Nobody believes in me anymore. My job is getting really, really easy. Hiding all kinds of facts in plain sight, and people are so primed that they don't even see these clear signs God is saying, come back to my house, come back to my word, come back to my Holy Spirit, come back to the prayer chamber, come back to the God who loves you. I want to fill you and set you free. I want to set you apart upon a rock. I want to build your house upon a rock, and nothing's going to take it down, saith the Lord. God loves you. God does care about you. Every little bit about you. He knows what it's really made of because he's the one who's the first and he's the last. He's the Alpha and Omega and, and he's the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. And he's the one who really cares about us. We don't want to be tricked. God doesn't want you to be tricked. He wants you to be so clear and so, so set apart and blessed for his, for his blessed will overall. They can mess with our food and water and all these kinds of things. Brethren, it's, it's pretty scary stuff. Uh, Amos, prophesies, uh, excuse me, Amos prophesies in chapter 4 about like, things we had talked about. But um, earlier, Jeremiah is talking about how God will lay. He says, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people and their fathers and their sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friends shall perish. God allows these people to go down because they continue to listen to the, the wrong voices. The chariots, the nation, whatever nation, whatever it is that makes us strong, things we actually need. Now, the touching our, our water supply, touching our, our air, whatever the thing they say that we have viruses or something like this. There's a lot of different things that they try to do to get us all mixed up. This is just God's way of saying, come back to your Father's house. Come back to your God who loves you. This is all lies. It's not the way it's supposed to be. All these people who are doing this stuff to it's so obviously wicked. And we take their ideas about science and say there is no God or questioning the existence of God. It's so demonic to question the existence of God. It's, it's, it's demonic to question Him anyway. To question Him is arguing with God. I don't think that's a very good idea. I don't think our arms are long enough to box with God. I don't recommend it at all. I believe instead of putting your hands in this fashion, put your knees down and bow before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. With all this warning in the Bible, the most popular book in world history, saying that this world is going to be taken over by the Antichrist, with all the warning that we could ever need, and yet people are still going to be looking right at the Bible and falling away from it. Why? Because you're listening to the devil's people. They're telling you, don't look at God the same way. He's not like that. Yes, it is. The God who speaks more times than anything. 17 times he's speaking, and he's always warning his only people. He's warning Judah and calls them worse, worse than a harlot. He says, you want to learn how to be a harlot? Look at my best people, because they're worse than a harlot. They actually pay to be harlots. Usually harlots get paid, but they're even worse. They actually pay to do this thing. They're, they're, it's a war from the lies of the world against the truth of God's kingdom. They're trying to tear down the view of God for who He is, a God of holiness and God of righteousness, and the truth and the truth in God, the truth in the Bible, and the truth of the testimony that is inside of all the true believers. And we overcome the devil by what? By the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. We want to make God look great. We want to exalt Him and, and make Him magnified. You can never magnify Him enough overall. It's really, really scary to see people running away from things that isn't even true. The Bible says that the wicked, the Bible says that the wicked run when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold like lions. They don't have to quiver every time. They don't have to run and say, well, what do we do now? Well, if we had a ritual of being on our knees and getting used to things of God, you know, we don't always know exactly what's going on. Something's going on. And the fact that people are buying the lie is enough to be a concern for us. It isn't real, but yet people are buying the lie and thus making it dangerous. I used to see, sometimes I'd see some crazy looking kid walking into a store, and even though I wasn't really impressed with the person, just the fact that I could look at the guy's face and see that this guy doesn't have any boundaries for his own spirit, he doesn't rule his own spirit at all, he just kind of does whatever he wants, he looks, he looks uncomfortable for that reason. But yet it's still because he's bought the lie, something is, is not doing too hot. Same way this world is buying the lie that all this stuff happens and now they can control you, keep you in your house or whatever. They can make it rule, rule that you can't even go to your church or whatever like this. This is madness. It's like, how in the world can Satan tell you don't go to church? Does that mean we got to reevaluate how we do church? I think so. 
Because I remember I heard about the Slavic situation when the Russian churches were taken over. They didn't even know how to run churches. Why? Because they're in big buildings learning how to be a Christian from someone who doesn't teach them how to pray. Why is it that the people who walk with Jesus said, teach us to pray? Right. Why is it the people who go to these churches for decades, they don't even know their Bibles? Mm. Don't tell me that they do. I've asked for 13 years in the street. Tell me about the book of Obadiah. Not one person but a racist told me what it means. People who were ministers, they don't even know one book of the Bible. Amen. Ask them about 50 records of the Beatles. They know every song, but they don't know the Bible. Don't tell me they know the Bible. They don't. So what I'm saying is we're paying for these giant buildings for people to get a cheaper version of Christianity where we don't have the power to overcome. It already happened in Russia. Don't let it happen in America. If the government has a chance to shut the church down, something is wrong. Amen? Maybe we need to reevaluate what the church really is. Maybe they shouldn't have so much power over whether we gather or not. That's madness. That is not the kingdom of God. We need to take back our grounds and not let these people take our view of the house of God to a place that is not truth. Overall, we have, we have to deal with everything that comes along in God's way. Logic will never be the answer. The leading of the Holy Spirit will be the answer to unfold things as He wants us to overall. He will show us the true proper, the proper tense of everything at, at overall. We won't be continuing to fall. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Nothing's happening, and yet people are, are running scared, proving that they're running to the world. It's like, that's what got you into trouble in the first place. Why not run back to God? We don't really know what's going on over here, but we do know one thing, that God is true. God is not the liar. God is the pure one. He's the solid rock that we can stand upon. Amen? We don't have to worry about these. This over here is confusing. One thing's not confusing, that God is our, for, our fortress. The righteous run into it, and they are safe. Amen? And I don't believe the thing's going to hurt anybody. I believe that we've got to take it for what it really is. There's, there's something that they're always trying to cover up. Every time they're doing do some wide epidemic, blah, 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 they're always trying to hide up what they're, what they're really doing. So what are they really doing? I don't know. I get more excited about wondering what God is doing, what God's going to do in me. What, where can I actually be a part of this thing, what we ought to be doing, instead of worrying about how, how we can see another church pop up and, and then be able to be taken down so easily. My brothers and sisters, this is not, this is not where we're supposed to be. Brothers and sisters have to be able to take responsibility to know that not only were you called to be a servant, but you're also called to be a leader. Amen. Everybody who's a, who's a born-again Christian, you might find someone who's smaller than you. You can pour into them. Find a Paul that you can submit to and learn from them and find other people who love you, but maybe that isn't that impressed with you because they're going to be a challenge to you so you never get cozy thinking, I'm all good right here. No, no, that's not the way it is. You need to have someone around you who loves you enough to tell you that, that you're wrong sometimes. And those who tell you the most kingdom truth love you the most. Amen. Because they know what matters the most. The day that you stand on that mighty throne, before that mighty throne, where angels won't even look at God. Amen. They hide their face and they hide their feet. Their feet that touch the earth. They don't want even that anything earthly to even be seen by God. They just hide from Him. And all they know, they can, they're getting revelation divinely, screaming holy. We're going to stand before this throne. 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands of angels and all those martyred in the great tribulation standing before him worshiping him. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Be blessing and glory and dominion and power. Hallelujah. Be unto God and unto the lamb. We're going to stand before this pure throne. This is the reality that should consume us. We need more time alone with the Lord. We need more time alone in the word and time releasing it. When, we rele when the church releases her right to share the gospel and to share her testimony, we've, lost, we've, we've taken a mighty risk of losing our first love. Because there's more joy in heaven when one sinner turns, planting seeds for God to water. Amen. You, maybe you didn't lead them to Jesus, but you're not going to lead them to Jesus anyway unless the Lord led you to lead them to Jesus because only the Spirit can be the one to really magnify God the way He must. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. He's the one who convicts, not us. Amen? This is where the, the answer is overall. So God is our portion. We're going to go back to the truth here and not let this world tell us what to do. And let, let our feet be the one proving who our God is overall. Not running to the world, but to the one who created it. Hallelujah? Amen. Father, we love you. We give you all the praise and glory for all that you are. Most High God, you have, you have made everything. It's all in your hands, God. And we know you've given us your word. 
you make it so simple sometimes we just can't even believe how simple it really is lord i pray that we would be purified i believe those on the holy path lord those that are separate from the ways of the world those that will judge themselves and allow your word to, to to consume that which is not of you lord i pray that your right hand and your outstretched arm would rip the roots out of our life, out of our hearts that doesn't that doesn't belong most high god i pray that you would do a radical cleansing on the hearts of those who believe in your d dear son and have received the partaking of the new nature, Lord, and the divine nature, Lord. And I pray that you would cleanse us in, our, in the blood, Lord. I pray that you'd help us to cleanse our hands, Most High God, and to purify our ways, and to, and to cleanse us of our double-mindedness as we're trying to please uh, those who are going to heaven and please those who aren't, Lord. I pray that we would be undivided mind, or we'd have a singleness of eye, that our body would be filled with your kingdom light, Lord. And not to be going by what we've heard all our life, but Lord, but what you're speaking to us even now in your holy word. Dear Holy Father, I pray that you'd resurrect your church, Lord, and, and cause people to rise up and to stand and to preach the un, un, unadulterated word of God. And that the word would come out like fire and to consume, Lord, that which is dragging people down. That it would burn out depression. It would burn out despair. It would burn out diseases, Lord. It would burn out everything, Lord. Your word is a healing word. It's a straightening out word. It brings beauty for ashes, dear Heavenly Father. It's straightening out crooked paths, Lord, Heavenly Father. Your word is absolutely mighty. We thank you for who you are and all that you've done in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 What else we got? Okay. Maybe you have anything you wanted to share before we moved on to the next section? I think uh, in the beginning, um, the priests are just the same, almost as high as the kings. And I would like to know if there's a division because the kings uh, depended on the priests for guidance. And uh, sometimes there's a, a battle between the two. Yeah, I was just thinking about that, actually, because there's a lot of people today, they like to attack the church and say, well, why doesn't God reveal himself to everybody? And I'm like, well, even when he had his own called out people, there was 12 tribes, and only one of the tribes, like part of this Levite tribe, were the ones that received the spiritual blessings, like you were talking about. Mm -hmm. So um, they all can't have the same blessings. It says the priests, they didn't get to have the normal provisions and blessings as everybody else, their blessing was God himself. And right. So they had something different. So they think that <clears throat> making it that they all needed each other. Yeah. See, is you have like 12 different tribes and you have um, 12 different, um, what do you call it, parts to our body, what is it? systems of our own body. Right. And all of them need each other. Our skeletal right. system, our digestive system, reproductive, everything. It all needs to be together. And same way in God's spiritual body, it all needs each other as well. Mm-hmm. Another one is um, when uh, Judah, was it Judah, and the, the walls were, um, the walls were not built, they were um, depleted. Okay. And I'm not sure what, I, I'm trying to remember what I was mm -hmm. thinking about on that part. Okay. Mm. I'm trying to remember um, the warning signs. I think was the uh, towards the the effect of the walls being not up. I I don't remember this the actual. So are you talking about like when it was coming down or going back up? Were they rebuilding, like Ezra rebuilding? Yeah, the, they were rebuilding. Oh, rebuilding, okay. Um, they were, I don't remember exactly that story okay. specifically. Okay. Sure. Um, I think um, they, okay, so they, they sent um, part of that all... Yeah, I'm not going to go into that one because I can't remember exactly. Okay. So there was another part um, where the the famine, they were sending out um, the the young the young men for water, and they how how did they not get the addressed of the famine before 
it happened. I mean, they were the mules and their flock, and then their their um, they all they all starved. And I don't remember how how was that affecting the community when they didn't seek warning. Didn't seek warning. Or they didn't have any warning or. Um, that that actually is a warning, you know what I mean? Because when the final judgment comes, it's really bad. So mm -hmm. there's several different places where the Lord, um, something like he says, like the death angel or whatever, and wipes out the Egyptians or whatever. There's another place where it shows him, in Isaiah 19, verse 1, it shows the Lord coming down and it's scaring him to death. He's coming down to wipe out um, uh, Egypt. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of places he'll come himself with a sword. Not just yeah. in the end, but even yeah. in the Old Testament, I found several places where he comes over Moab and he comes over Basra, he comes over Egypt, does the same thing and really hits them hard. That's the big problem when he really wipes them out. Mm -hmm. These other radical inconveniences is like a warning shot that the real problem is going to come if you don't knock it off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like Egypt had all those warnings, you know, like the red, the uh, the blood and the frogs and the lice and. Everything happened, and he didn't listen, and he lost his son, and then eventually lost everything because he wouldn't stop, stop fighting right. God. So that's that same thing has been repeated several times. There always is warnings. Right. You know what I mean? The testimony in nature is one. The scripture, the prophets, is another one of the warning shots. It could be a verbal warning, and hardly ever does anybody listen. You know, like Jonah prophesies to Nineveh, which is the capital of Assyria. Once they listened, and then Nahum does the same thing, and they didn't listen, and then they got wasted from it. You know, but. It's been said that sometimes people who are pagans, they look to the moon and the suns and stuff, and if it's set up in certain ways, it starts to scare them. They think that they think that whoever's up there is trying to tell them something. So when Jonah's prophesying to them, he didn't. These people who didn't even want God yet, they were like already somehow properly prepared to hear that. Mm -hmm. Amazing how they were ready to receive that word. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. They don't even want God, and yet they were willing to listen somehow. And later on, they wouldn't. That's pretty interesting. So. It's that that would be when the crops are going down. That's that is a warning shot. Yeah. It's not as bad as him coming to to eradicate. Well, they were you. all embarrassed, you know, like, oh my gosh, we didn't take heed. Yeah. And um, even they didn't have food for the flock, the the beasts or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be a problem, you know. And it and it happened. Who was that one? that stopped the rain and then eventually saw the cloud size it was Elisha or whatever mm -hmm. you know and he had the power to stop the rain so that was a plague against them so it was a huge inconvenience you mm -hmm. know what I mean yeah. just like these different things that are hitting us these are not even real and yet we scope oh this is getting serious it's nothing compared to their warning shots so you can count them as like maybe birth pangs or something where they get stronger if we don't listen mm -hmm. so if the church doesn't get radical about their obedience then it's not going to get less it's going to get more so, yeah. I seen uh, I seen on the online about China, and they were having undercover cams, and they were eating um, fowl that they were not even supposed to. Uh, you know, they had um, bats, they had um, foxes, they had snakes, and and they're in cages. I couldn't believe that. I just was seeing all that, and I can't. I, you know, God, God will, will punish those who are not following the books of the Bible. You know, yeah. the laws. And it's it's kind of like, um, like in Leviticus 11, it shows you a huge list of animals that you should and shouldn't eat right. because it's an abomination to your body doesn't necessarily, I don't know if it's necessarily an abomination against God, but it is an abomination against your body, and the same as when you eat um, your own self. You know, like, there's places in the Bible where people are, like, so messed up, they start to eat their own flesh off their own arm, you know what I mean, because they're so starving. So this is a form, this is a sign that God is definitely rocking your world. This is not a blessing, it's a curse. Right. God is telling you, I'm not happy with you, you guys keep on doing stupid stuff. And now I'm letting you know. This is my way of letting you know. I'm gonna hit you where it really hurts. And are they are they the ones that still? They also, uh, they have a dog fest. Dog fest. Yeah, they every year they have a dog fest. They um, slaughter multiple dogs and oh, yeah. selling them. It's and utterly unbelievable. It's 
so I I just can't believe it. Yeah, what I saw today was it was just I don't know how we happen to be saying the same thing, but yeah, what I saw today I don't even want to say it. It's just so horrible of yeah. what you, what you just said, and I don't want to think about it. But yeah, it was yeah. it was that real and it was huge. Yeah, it was very plenty and it was very very unbelievable. It's just like they can't be real, but yeah, that's called judgment. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, "Wow, this is judgment," they just continued going with it and they don't turn back to God. Right. You don't hear about any revivals from this. You hear people just going, "What do we do? What do we do?" I'm like, it's so simple. So it's not going to shake me. Whatever has to happen, that's what's going to happen. But I'm like I said, as long as I'm alive, we'll be in here. This is very very super high priority to be in here. I love it. Mm -hmm. And I listen to the material later on, and it keeps me strong throughout the week because the weeks are confusing sometimes. Your mind, you never know where your mind's going to get let off to. So right. it's important to have anchors, and I make my material for myself to be anchored because I, I believe it's I believe it's right. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully it benefits other people too. <laughs> yeah, because God doesn't want us to forsake the assembling of no, ourselves together. No, no, I will never miss. I don't care. I mean, it has to be really, really bad weather for me to miss, and that's very rare. So basically, never will miss. If I'm not, as long as I'm alive, Amen. I will be here for sure. Amen. 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 So, yeah, there's another piece to this thing. I'll just give it to you before we change. It's about sales tactics to make something sound really great to sell it. You know what I mean? They can use sell tactics. I think yeah. that's what they did with the news. And I seen that movie years ago called Making a Movie Star. And they can just the main system. They control everything. They get tons of posters, put them all over the city, put them on TV, and make some dude who can just sing. What do you do who couldn't sing? A lot half the broke people in the world can sing. But they can make him look so great, make an idol of this guy. Yeah. And all of a sudden, oh, that guy can do it like nobody sound else. System and they can just sell him. You know what I mean? Make it, make the world buy the lie. Right. And so you can do the same thing with these with these lies, with the mad cow and the swine flu. I'm like, all these things, we've heard of diseases, we've heard of the flu, and we've heard of viruses. Now all of a sudden they magnify it and make it so big. Everybody's like fearing this, and I'm like, well, what about the fear of God? <laughs> why, don't you guys, why don't we ever consider to check our ways? It's just, it's unbelievable how deceived this nation is. In the churches, too. The churches are like, like, like you literally wonder, are you talking to a, a Christian or not? Because they talk like they just don't get it. They just want to go with what they've seen all the time. I'm like, no. That's not what the Bible teaches. Don't say you believe in the Bible and then continue to talk like the world. You know what I mean? Right. I can't handle that. I had a, a situation with a, a person. And um, it was all all about protection, protection, protection. I And I got so... Um, concerned whether she was a Christian or not because uh, she was not um, she was not she's too curious concerned and I I keep reminding her well God's God's gonna be revealing this and and we have to trust in the Lord yeah. so yeah I, yeah, I don't believe in that. I, it's just really hard to see a Christian woman not not as strong in the faith, you know, uh, especially if you thought she was. <laughs> you know, you just kind of like do a backflip or, you know, like, what? <laughs> like shocked, you know, when that happens. Yeah, we we got to look at the Bible. God of Scripture is not here to bless us no matter what. That's a lie. He's not here to protect us no matter what. That's also a lie. Right. You never see that in Scripture at all. In fact, it's almost the exact opposite, you know. He, he says, I will do these things if you ask in my name. He says, you ask, but you have not because you ask not. And when you do ask, you ask amiss because you ask according to your lust and not according to my will. So if you're not doing that which is pleasing in his sight, your prayers don't even count anyway. He doesn't even hear your prayers. Mm -hmm. We see the people praying in vain. Read Isaiah chapter 1. He says, I don't want, he says, your, your, your offerings make me sick. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, what if a man gives flowers to his wife when he's over there sweet-talking uh, crazy Rita behind the scenes? You know, she doesn't want the flowers. They don't mean anything. Same God says, I don't want your oblations and your sacrifices because you're cheating on me. You guys yeah. are playing the harlot and you expect me to want your blessings. Who do you think I am? Give this trash to your governor and see what they want, this garbage. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's so ridiculously clear if you just read the book. It's I so was clear. reading Matthew and chapter 5 and then seeing those who are out praying openly, they will get their rewards, you know. So oh. it's kind of like a <laughs> sa almost similar situation, you know. And pray and 
pray in, in your room or privately, you'll have a reward in heaven. Right, yeah. So to be seen of men. Right, right. right. And that's what all, Matthew 23, it shows you. All the Pharisees is about, how do I look before men? Mm -hmm. They don't care what God says. They say they do because that's what they want. To, people want to see. But all of what they do, it's not about being legalistic. It's because their people were, they love the praises of men. Just like the God men and the Hindu religions and stuff like that. They love the praises of men. They look all peaceful and loving. Oh, they, yeah. They it's love like, it. it's like, a, like a show. Yeah. That's what they're doing. And that's then what Jesus they, said. And they just say, oh, bless you. Amen. Yeah. And, and just yeah. use that. And then <laughs> their thoughts and something else is somewhere else. And Yeah. I, I noticed that. <laughs> makes sense, huh? Yeah. And yeah. Brian and I were talking on the way over here about how a fear and how they're trying to play on people's fear. Oh, cool. totally. Yes. And of just course. trying to make it a, one simple thing or if he... Oh, you got a little bit of scratch through, or you got, you know, you you make it play out bigger and more than it needs to be, and and this is ha happens to be cold and flu season anyway, <laughs> you know, and so you know, um, it's just like, uh, you know, so there, if you if you cough, you must have the coronavirus or something, you yeah. know. That's how Corey was saying. She coughed and the lady looked at her crazy and she walked away and she looked at her with a stern eye. And <laughs> people are so crazy, man. And she was laughing. <laughs> the people are literally are dominated by the satanic global circus. It's exactly. just utterly unreal how, how, how easily deceived people are. Yeah. Give them a gospel that has no power, no telling how far off track you can get them. They'll believe anything you say. But in the healthcare field, in his name. you know, yeah, I, I go do do I go to several places and for the person's sake I will wear a mask mm -hmm. just just to show yeah. I'm very concerned and I'm following right. the health. That's laws. wise. I honor that. And yeah. so i I know that I it's it's not gonna help me but at least if I get that little air in my because <laughs> I hate that being closed in in the mask it's it I cannot breathe mm -hmm. but um I I will wear them <laughs> you for, know for the sake of I where they're at to different people yeah same you know? as like you don't eat certain things around certain people because you don't want to offend them right, you know, it's right. very respectful yeah, yeah I get that right. and around me you don't have to wear it <laughs> and I read that on the <laughs> mask only helps the person who's sick. That if you're healthy and there's nothing wrong, if you're not sick, the mask doesn't really help you. Except for maybe play, keep people from being fearful or whatever. But what they're what they're saying is like mm -hmm. it's spread through saliva, like it's contained in. So if you cough or sneeze or something, then it's projected. So if you're sick and you wear a mask. It's going to contain it here rather mm -hmm. than getting it out there. If you're if you're not infected and you're wearing something over your face and somebody coughs on you, it's going to land on that and it's going to sit there and possibly infect you. <laughs> but so the whole thing is um, God, even who was it John the Baptist saying you know the Lord is standing in the at the threshing floor separating the wheat from the chaff right mm -hmm. and I believe God is using the powers of this world to shake the world to separate the wheat from the tares to d divide the right from the, the sheep from the goats yeah. you know who who are you gonna be in the times of chaos right. when times of trouble are you going to turn on your neighbor are you going to um, allow your worst yourself to become your worst enemy you know the ones you know are we fighting to save a civilization of beasts or are we do we really believe in the kingdom of God that lasts forever even to the point of death are we going to be the per you know because we're all dying we're all on our way at some point mm -hmm. sometime we're all dead mm -hmm. so the question is are we living in eternity in the Lord's kingdom unto death. Mm -hmm. This is testing period. It sounds yeah. really deeper than what the nation is
after veiling it to be yeah. to the actual um, tests in different levels, you know, knowing that we're, we all are um, not, not witnessing of God's truth, and, and so He's testing us. Yeah. It's like, are we living in fear, or are we trusting God? Yeah. yeah. I think that, like, you know, what they could do, if people really are dying, if there really is actual deaths happening in China, or even here, um, I don't, I'm not going to say I do believe it, and if they do, I believe it's something like, um, where they can do it in private, like I showed you the integrity of some of the people in the medical world, clearly not okay. Even that one lady, she was an African American lady, she went under surgery, left a little recorder on her to listen to the, what they say when she was asleep. And it was really, really bad against her, talking jokes against her, proving that these people are not like some wonderful, they're not, they, their character isn't that great, they're, they're normal people, right? So anyways, oh, wow. anyways, um, ah, so if you fall out because you have no oxygen, if, you, if, if my philosophy is true that the 5G thing, which I believe is really the, the right answer, if you people are losing oxygen and they just fall out because they can't breathe, and that seems to be the, the, the symptoms that we are seeing, and then they take them to the hospital with any old story that they want. Oh, they didn't make it. The coronavirus got them. You know what I mean? Who's going to know? You know what I mean? Because it's in secret. And that's what I think about. That's, that's why I get nervous about the doctor world because it's in secret. Who's going to know? They tell you, well, you, this is not visiting hours now. Well, why not? <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. the, it might it might not apply to me because I'm not if if I have a loved one in the hospital visiting hours don't apply to me. <laughs> I will be there, and if you don't let me visit, if you don't, yeah, we're both leaving then. You know, what I mean, because I I trust me more than I trust them sometimes. So, mm -hmm. anyways, it's there's no easy answers, but we can seek, seek the Lord, and um, so I don't believe in the virus. I think the coronavirus is about as dangerous as uh, probably less dangerous than the flu, the common flu which is already hardcore enough, but I don't think people are going to die from the coronavirus. I don't think it's going to hurt you. I think if something happens, it would be this 5G. Or if that's allowed, that's where people are dropping. That's, that's my understanding right now. So, cool. Right. Let's go ahead and change channels to the next section here. Um, I think we're pretty good. I think the, short, the word was a lot shorter today, so I don't think we need to change anything. Um, oh, yeah, let's stop it anyway. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Exodus 23, 25. I know.
good. Woo! Yeah. Get the tambourine. Woo! <laughs> Bring it. We need it. Let's do it. 
<laughs> hey, man. I like that. Ah! Praise the Lord. Oh, man. Whoo, glory. The garden. Yes. <laughs> man. Now's a good time to have a garden. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I come. I come. Home to the garden. Hello.
Hallelujah. Oh! Oh, praise the Lord. Oh. Man. No warning labels. They just blow us out of the water every time.
Ephesians 3:20 20 through 21. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Hallelujah. Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. Father God, let us always remember who we, it is that we pray to when we bow our knees and our head and, and enter into your uh, presence, God. And let us not forsake um, the gathering. Let us not forsake the um, prayer closet or the fellowship and the worship and, the, and all, the, all the statues that you have um, told us, God. And uh, we know that you can do all things, and uh, definitely all glory and honor um, to you, mm -hmm. oh God. And we thank you for everything you do, God. We ask um, you know, the, your blessing on the food, God. Um, God, we just love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We have a new server today. The crock pot's not there. <laughs> it's gone. There's something wrong with it's this picture. Uh -oh. <laughs> You know what's going on. It's the CB. We stole our food. Who stole your food? The it CB. magically just The CB stole it. The seed of the woman. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Genesis 3.15 Because he stooped so low, God hath exalted him very high. Philippians 2.9 Arthur Way's translation From this first great act, uh, in fact, in his revelation to that last greater act when he died for our sins on Calvary and up until the very time when God exalted him very high to sit at his own right hand in the heavenlies. Our Savior's example was one of profound humility. He came from the bosom of the Father to become the seed of the woman. He turned from 
the words which I have spoken to you, the same shall judge you to be in his innocence judged of sinful men and crucified. O thou who didst humble thyself to be born of a woman who didst bear our sins in thine own body on a tree, we bow on our faces before thee and worship and adore. Amen. Another passage where Christ would be showing up in the Psalms and throughout the Old Testament, as we had mentioned before. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I know not, that I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. It's really, really precious to see the body of Christ be able to see um, the world with their own ideas even if there's any truth to it at all, but clearly there was a lot that wasn't. And sometimes we're going to have to endure these things, knowing that what's happening isn't right. And there will be plenty of injustices on earth that will come across our plate. And to see how we maintain, to see how we will act and respond in a godly way or a way that is of the ways of the world. And it's important to know that the Lord didn't do anything wrong, he, but he, and he opened not his mouth when they accused him, and they, they were wrong. They were completely wrong, and he didn't worry about it. There's a lot of people who had to face inconceivable injustices, and they didn't, they didn't stick up for themselves. They didn't, they didn't say this is not fair. God, God knows more of what is fair and what is not fair than we do, and it's a really, really powerful example to see. Um, godly people who clearly have something so significantly strong, strong enough to look at that's, that's such an eye-opener of what needs to consume us during the hardships of life. And uh, to watch how they handle it is, is a tremendous amount of light. Uh, we, we, I think it's really, really tempting sometimes to ever look at things that are so huge and so classic in Scripture as though it's just a given. But we have to remember that they walked on earth, whether Christ or anyone else, they had to face these exact same temptations of wanting to respond like the ways of the world and respond to defending ourselves. But those who really see the big picture and they still keep their eyes fixed upon the Lord who has the sight of the end from the beginning and is it's his grasp all at the same time knows that it's all already taken care of, that God's not going to let anything slide and everything will be coming into justice, and that we can leave it all in His hands. He said, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Everything is going to be in His control. So our job is to watch our own heart and guard our own heart. And oftentimes it doesn't always work smoothly. So today when we go to the table of the Lord, it's going to be to let go of things that doesn't matter, that we don't want to hold on to anymore. Things that have tried to weigh us down, and say, Lord, if you can lay it down, then so can we. If injustice can happen to you, then injustice can happen to me, and that's just the way it's going to be. And we're going to endure through it the same way our Savior it did as well. So let's go ahead and pass out the uh, elements. If everybody, if you could pass them out. And whoever would like to take, please do. Everybody wants to keep everything strong before you and the Lord, then please do. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you are and all that you have done for us, God. We thank you for this precious table where we can examine ourselves, Lord, in the midst of your blessing, Lord. It's very easy to discern when we're gathered together under that which you've already spoke, Lord. Your word is already here. Your sovereign touch is here for us to be able to re-examine our hearts, Father, before you. I pray that you would be the one to shine light where light needs to be shined, that we would be uh, shining examples of what the redeemed truly looks like, Father. We all know that this generation has been under attack for a great long time and that there could be plenty of things to, to look at in our own hearts. Father, I pray that this would be a time 
for us to examine ourselves to see that we be in the faith and to be ready for the cleansing um, that to, to put ourselves into that which is pleasing in your sight I thank you for the cleansing of the blood we thank you for what happened on the cross and we thank you for what happened three days later when you rose from the grave we thank you for being with us in the midst of this time at the table take glory for your name in Jesus name Amen Work and wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus, and what can make me whole again, nothing but the blood of Jesus, and oh,
Stash, place, drop, plant three tracks in a conspicu conspicuous place each day? Why, of course, anyone could do that. Have a beautiful night. Don't forget to take a chick track and place it on a dispenser in a public bathroom after this week. Of course, anyone could do that. Yeah! <laughs> Doesn't that just make you want to shout? Conspicuous mean? Sneaky. Oh. Can you be sneaky for God? <laughs> want to hide it under a bushel? No. <laughs> this is what you do want to hide it under a bushel. Got so many songs down. Took forever, huh? <laughs> she got to see the behind the scenes where she's like, sweet, that's a lot of work. <laughs> Get all the screens, made them, and make them, and then put them on there and everything. Trying to set it up so it gets easier and easier, but yeah, <laughs> harder than it looks. I bet, huh? Because of yeah. Mm -hmm. I appreciate my hard work. Oh, you guys are just laying out like this, waiting for the church service to start. <laughs> it's late. All right, brother. <laughs> Amen. This thing. I believe. These are generally pretty good, huh? Are you kind of the movies? Inspirational movies. Have you seen, you know, pure, great pure flicks is? Huh? Like, God's Not Dead or something like that. Have you seen that? Oh, oh. I don't watch 
watch how much movies are complaining. They're kind of like, they're good. They're hard to explain. I think they're good. What do you think? I like the, the, uh, um, encounter ones. Mm -hmm. Man, that diner one was just amazing. I thought it was really great. These things don't last very long. See, I like doing these little guys at the beginning of the service like that. It's probably better, huh? They die off so quickly.